Well, Pete, it sounds to me like you're kind of um, telling this as the story as though you think the God stuff's all true and Jesus and that. But what do you say to people who, that's their sticking point? They're not even sure if that's all true. Uh, yeah, a friend of mine not long ago who uh, doesn't believe in God really liked the look of these beads and wanted to know if she could wear them. So I said that was cool as me as long as she understood what they were about. So I think from her point of view, she liked the idea of having them and wearing them because reflecting on this whole idea that perhaps we did come out of the heart of God, whoever or whatever that was, and that perhaps it is true that we have fallen under a curse. And even people who don't believe in God, most of those people know that there's something wrong with this world, that it feels like it's definitely not what it should be. And so the idea of a curse that's fallen upon it makes a lot of sense. And, and then there's the issue of what to do about that curse. So I think even for people who are questioning the very existence of God and whether or not any of this is true, these beads can be a useful way of reflecting on it and even comparing, say, the teachings of Jesus with the teachings of other rulers and teachers around the world. So even that idea, for example, that we are free from the power of the curse because somebody gave their life to break the power of it. People see that all the time. Business leaders, people in sport and industry constantly discover that unless somebody makes a sacrifice, then this curse or whatever it is that people are in the grip of won't be broken. So philosophically, it shows that the Christian message has a lot of credibility. Right, yeah. Thanks.